Destroyer of Words, the game of linguistic obliteration. For those of you that think that Scrabble is too friendly and not evil and cold enough, now we have a Scrabble variant in which you will be using words to destroy other people's words. It's also a variant Scrabble that has a theme, and the most archetypical theme in gaming in the last 30 years, which is wizards fighting against each other for no clear reason, but really enjoying the process of destroying each other's lives, resources, everything. And it fits with the Scrabble theme because you're creating words here that ideally you can think of as spells that you use to destroy the words of the opponent. Again, for those that think Scrabble is not mean enough. So you have letters. Uh, you will place the letter tiles in this bag that comes with the game, which I find too small and especially too narrow. I find it almost impossible to really uh, shuffle and scramble the tiles in there. So I replaced the bag with a larger one that I had at home. These are scrabble type tiles, which however looks a little different. They have a black area and a white area, and the white area is there to indicate which side is on top, which is important for, you know, M and W. And then of course you can see another unusual thing on top of the letters looking somewhat very, very goth is these little spikes that depart from the letter. Say T has one that goes there, two in this direction and one here, R has two diagonal ones. And these are indicate the directions in which you can use a letter to attack other people's words. What? Yes. So each player will draw a number of letters and they will place them on a little holder such as this one. And the holder goes on this player right here, which is an area on top where you will place the letters that you destroy from the opponent's areas. And some letters will be worth one point, some two, some three points. And you place the letters that you destroyed in the corresponding box. And then you have another section here which indicates the type of weapon that you can use when you attack. Cool, huh? I'll show you how it works. Now, uh, the board is divided into four areas. Each player has an area connected to their color, so purple would have this one. And so if you have four players, each player takes an area with two players. Each player take two areas, and I guess you can choose how you want to assign them, if you want to diagonally or whatever. With three players, an area remains unused, so that is not an ideal number of players. Now, when it is your turn, first you will create words using your letters. You can create as many words as you can uh, in one, and you do not have to connect them to one another, Scrabble style, crossword puzzle style. They have to have at least one letter in your own area, but other than that, you can go out of there. The first time that you place a word in the game, it has to cover the I area in your section. Also, the first turn, there is no attacking. So you will create those words. And you can see there are other areas that represent mouths. These are the mouths that will utter the destructive spells. So later in the turn, you'll be able to attack by using words that are parts of grids that cover at least one of the mouths. So it's my turn, I have these letters here. Can you see some good words? I don't know, I just totally drew a bunch of random letters. Oh yeah, oh yeah, wyvern, that would work, wyvern. Totally just popping my mind. Wyvern, totally random word. I mean, who doesn't think about wyvern so at least a couple of times every day? That would work. And at the end of the game, uh, letters that are in my area will count uh, for points, one with three points each. All letters are born equal in this game. And so I still want to have a lot of long words in my area. And then I'm left with some more letters that I also decide to use and maybe I'll write man. There you go. And then maybe it's my opponent's turn, uh, because it's the first turn, there is no attacking, also there is nowhere where I can attack. And suppose that my opponent is blue, and now my opponent decides to write uh, nose, because, that's, uh, because they have to cover the eye, and then maybe they still have some letters that they want to use, and maybe they write gust. So each turn after you write your words, you can use, you can launch an attack 
Again, the first turn you wouldn't be able, but suppose this is not the first turn and my opponent just wrote Gust, which covers that mouth and allows the opponent to use any letter in this grid to attack. When you attack, when you attack, you declare the letter that you're using to attack. And again, it has to be in that grid. Also, you mark the mouth that you used because you cannot use that one twice in a row. I would need to attack from another mouth before I can use that one again. Then you declare the attack. The attack, the range of the attack is the length of the word that you're using. So actually an attack from this word would have a, le would have a range of four. The attack goes in the direction of the spike that you decide to use. Say I decide to use this spike here and it goes in that direction. Remember I have a range of four, one, two, three. I would be able to destroy that letter there. And that's, and that's what it does. Now, there are different types of attack, actually. You think, you think of them as different types of weapons. So the basic attack will destroy a single word, but you have even better weapons. You remember the player aid that I showed you earlier? Now, after you write, after you write your word, you, word or words, use as many letters as you decide and can, you will slide all of the remaining letters all the way to the right. And then where the letters are will tell you the kind of weapon that you can use. Basically, if they are here, you can use the basic attack, which destroys a single letter. If you're here, you can use the Lexicutioner. You can think of it as a bomb. That is, after it touches a target, it destroys also the letters that are adjacent to it. And then actually if you used all of your letters or only one remains, then you can use the erasing nature, which you can think of as a laser. So it just destroys everything in its path. In this case, suppose we're launching a, a, a bomb attack, then we would destroy this one and the other two. Suppose we're using a regular attack, then we destroy this one. After a letter is destroyed, it goes on the opponent's on the opponent's player aid. Letters destroyed from the central area worth one point, from this ring here, from the intermediate area, two points, and from the corner areas, three points. Once a letter is destroyed and assigned to the opponent, we still need to reconcile the board. That is, the, active, the, the, the target player will need to remove letters until all the words on the board makes, makes sense. So, for example, in this case, M and N, well, they don't make any sense, so they're also removed and eliminated. But suppose that the target had placed their letters, say, this way, uh, this way, and the destroyed letter was that one, then N, well, that's an article, is an acceptable word. And suppose that actually maybe that was the case, and we destroyed that one, Ma. As, as, a, as a familiar way of calling mother, that's probably most players will accept it. Wyvern is a great word, but it's also a very fragile one, because if you take one, the E, well, not much is left there to, to, to save it. I think you lose the whole word or all of it. So actually, that is interesting, because it forces you, or it encourages you, to create words that maybe wouldn't be as desirable in other games, but say a word like rant, that's a good one because it can take a lot of punishment before it goes out of commission. It can survive if it loses the R, it can survive if it uses the T and maybe even the R. So not all words are born equal in this game. This is pretty much how it works. Then after the attack, it would go to another player. Of course, at the end of your turn, you draw back until you have enough tiles to fill your, your holder. And continue like this. Each turn, build multiple words, possibly attack, collect tiles from the opponent, and you continue until all tiles have been drawn. That triggers the end of the game. There may be more turns before the game is actually over. But at, the point, at, at that point, at the end of the game, you score one point for each letter that is in your personal section plus points based on the letters that you collected during the game one two or three points depending on where they were when you destroyed them and at the point the player with the highest total is the winner of the game 
Destroy Awards. I expected a fun, maybe silly, maybe humorous variant of Scrabble. I mean, how can you take seriously the idea of using Scrabble words to destroy Scrabble words? But the game turned out to be a lot more than that. Um, it is meaner than Scrabble, yes, because you attack people all the time. But the game actually has ways to keep you entertained, to present you with interesting problems that make this game a lot more interesting than Scrabble. It may just be that to me a game where you can't attack and the same game where you can actually attack people, usually the second version is more interesting to me, maybe because of my war gaming roots, but um, yeah, you have a hybrid between Scrabble and a war game because you have so many concepts that do apply from war games, some line of sight because you want to trace a line that destroys the opponent and doesn't hurt your own game pieces. Uh, range, the direction in which you're attacking, almost feels like trench warfare, you're creating these grids of trenches. And yet it is still ingrained very well in the Scrabble idea of creating words. As I showed you, not all words are equal and so actually you will think of words in a different way here because you want your spike to go in specific directions, you want your word to be able to dodge some of the spikes of the opponent that are there from previous turns, but of course they can still be activated, you don't have to activate just the spikes on the last word that you placed, so I'm kind of dodging there. Um, you have valuable words that like that are long but maybe fragile and just taking away a, a letter or two will make the whole thing fall apart then you're gonna put them maybe you're gonna hide them in the back and you put stronger maybe shorter more flexible words in the front with things coming out it is really pretty extraordinary to me how uh, the game has a strong tactical feel, the strong spatial element that really is connected very well with the verbal game element. I did not believe that there could be a game that combined making words and destroying words like a war game so well, that could put these two things together so well, and the game really does so. I played it with my wife and she liked it and this is a great endorsement because she doesn't play many games these days, she's more of a casual gamer, she was more hardcore back in the day but now with so many things happening, family and stuff, she's always tired and she prefers lighter games. The fact that she was hooked with this game and, and also she does not usually like direct confrontation so I didn't know how this was going to work. So maybe the fact that we were using words instead of soldiers somehow created some sort of emotional filter but she really enjoyed destroying my words and I didn't feel too guilty destroying hers. I mentioned this episode to tell you this is a game that does not have to be just for hardcore war gamer with the fact oh it's like a scrabble variant you can get people to play it that would never uh, play games uh, that maybe have an obvious you know war element but it's good, it really works, it has a nice flow. The first couple of turns may be frustrating because there's no attack in the first turn, but maybe first player goes, no attack, second player goes, no attack, and then first player goes and destroys something that the, the, the second player did. I mean, most likely the first player is gonna do the first kill in the, in the second round, and maybe the second player will, will take a while to recover from that, but sooner or later, the, the one attacker that is attacking a lot will slow down because they use or covered all of their, uh, their mouths that are closer to the opponent, then casting at spells or launching attacks on the back becomes harder, and so definitely the back and forth becomes a lot more interesting. Don't be frustrated the first turn or two, an opponent keeps destroying your words because it'll get better, hopefully. That's what I've seen happen. Destroyer of Words with a pleasant surprise. Uh, give it a try. It's a very unique game. It feels very fresh, very different, and I like that. It has a different feel from a lot of other games that I play. It's a smart combination of two things that usually don't go together, but what can I say? In Destroyer of Words, they do. They get together, they work together very well, and they result in a truly fun experience.